Hey guys, today we will be looking at our SQL count function. Now I have here on screen two scenarios where we want to bring back the number of students enrolled per class and the number of students enrolled per course. And we will use these examples to explore how the count function in SQL helps us to accomplish this. Now, the first thing that we want to do is look at who is in the enrollments table. So I can select star from enrollments and as always i'll use my school db and then once i select all from enrollments i can see the students by id and what class they are in so for the first scenario where we want to see how many students are enrolled per class it means i want to see how many students are in class number five class number six and class number one so I want a count. So what I can do here is say group by, and then, well, we have all the columns. What are the columns I really want? I want maybe the class ID and the student ID, because I want to know what class and the number of students in said class. So I can say class underscore ID, and I will take student underscore ID. And then I will group by whatever it is I'm selecting. And then that will bring back more distinct values. Well, not really distinct values. We just eliminated some columns. What, what we want to do is instead of bringing back this many, we want to bring back the class ID and a count, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six for class number five and one and one for class number six and class number one. So we have a function called count where we can wrap any value around in the count. And then what this will do is once it is grouped, it will count the number of records being grouped. So when I execute this, oh, sorry, execute this without the selection, then I see, oh, I'm not getting back the correct thing because I'm grouping by student ID. Remember that student ID changes each time, so it's still not distinct. So I'm going to take student ID out of the group by clause. And remember that once we wrap a column inside of one of these aggregate functions, we don't have to and probably shouldn't be including it in the group by. So if I do this again, then we see a better count where we have one in class one, we have six students in class five, and we have one student enrolled in class number six. Then we can expand all of this to see more detail. So we can inner join our classes table. And instead of bringing back the ID, I will bring back the name so that it would be C dot title. But then this is also going to cause a problem because the class the class really doesn't have any name. The class is only made up of the lecturer ID and the courses. So what I would have to do is then inner join once again on the courses table so that I can get the details on the course. Now that looks a little better. And let's just dissect what's happening in our inner joins. So up until this point, when we were joining, we were joining everything up to the main table that is being selected from. In this situation, however, I'm doing what I call a daisy chain where I'm selecting from one table and then I'm inner joining onto another table. And then the third inner join or the second inner join or which brings us the third table is actually being joined onto the previously joined table. So let's look at that again. We're selecting from enrollments and then we're joining enrollments onto classes and well i i didn't include the alias here so just so we can see exactly what's going on i'll put on the alias so enrollments class id must match a class id in the classes table and so this inner join is bringing enrollments and classes together however there is no condition on which enrollments can be joined to our courses so the only way to get courses in the mix is to then join it onto the classes table or the classes records. And so in my inner join for courses, I'm joining the course ID found in the courses table 
onto the course ID found in the classes table. So for every enrollment, we're bringing back a class. And then for every class, we're bringing back a course, the course details. And as a result, we can then access the title of the class or well, the course associated with the classes. And so in our result set, we see that we have the name of the course with six and then the website development with one and the data mining with one. Now, the next scenario that is presented would be bring back the number of students enrolled per course. Now, the significance of course versus class would be that, remember that an instance of a class is based on the classes table. A course being taught by a lecturer, that's a class. But many courses could be taught because in the courses table we have many courses and then each of them could have different class classes scheduled all right so essentially for as many enrollments as there would be for classes one and two being which are the same course then this second scenario should capture that so if there were three classes available for website development for argument's sake. And there were 20 students in session number one, 10 in session number two, and 15 in session number three, then we should be able to write a query that shows that for website development as a course, there are currently, and my math is going to fail me here, so just work with me, 45 students doing website development that would be different from knowing how many are doing session one versus how many are doing session two so this query is bringing back how many would be doing each session so i could include the time here so that would be c dot time and that would bring back for this class session at five o'clock for internet authoring, there are six students. For this class session at that time, there are that many students. However, in the second scenario, we would want to see just for internet authoring, regardless of the time, how many students are there. So I'm actually going to leave you to put in some sample data and to write that query and see what comes back. I'm going to do the same and upload the solution and you can mix and match. And that's essentially how the count function works.